When you've got the basics sorted on your smart home, the next thing that everyone starts to look at is the dashboard. And if you're looking at having this proudly displayed on a wall mounted panel, then you're going to want it to look really polished. In this video, I'm going to show you a handful of dashboard cards that stood out to me recently, not just because they look nice, but because they actually make Home Assistant dashboards easier to live with. So if you enjoy building dashboards that are a bit more polished, but still practical, then this video is for you. Hey everyone, my name's Simon and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek, a channel that's all about home assistant and smart home technology. So it seems like everyone wants the best possible looking dashboard in Home Assistant, and that's certainly true if you're going to have it on a wall-mounted tablet. Over the last few weeks, I've been having a look at some of the new cards that have appeared on the Home Assistant Community Store, and I've been really impressed with some of the things the community have come up with. And I'm going to go through five of them today in this video. You'll need to install them via the Home Assistant Community Store, also known as Hacks. And if you haven't already got Hacks installed, then I've got a brand new 2025 video on the channel that goes through the simple steps to do this. I'll put a link in the description of this video if you want to go and check that out. The following five cards all offer something different. and I'll put a link to each of these cards in the description of the video if you want to take a look at those yourself. So first up, we have something called Device Card, and this just goes by the developer name of Home Assistant Extras. This card looks to take the functionality you see when you click on a device in Home Assistant and allows you to have that available to you on your dashboard. As you can see here, the detail on the card is nicely laid out and you've got collapsible sections as well just to keep everything nice and clean. There's plenty of examples on the GitHub repository as well, and you can even have entity pictures displayed in the card. So in Hacks, just search for device card and it should be shown in the available to download section. If we click on that and then click on the download button in the bottom right corner, once you've refreshed your browser, we should now be able to go to our dashboard and add a card. And if we search for device card, then it should show up. So we just need to select a device and I'm going to pick my Akara pet feeder. And as you can see, it comes up with all of the device details and then we can start configuring how we want this card to look. We can exclude certain sections if required, as well as change the order that they appear in. Then we've got various features for the card, like hiding state, showing the entity picture, having a compact layout and so on. Now, if I choose my wiser heating hub and have that in a compact view, when I then click on it, I get further controls and sensory information displayed. When you get little colored lines on an entity, as you can then see in the documentation, that generally indicates that there is a problem with that specific item. This is a really interesting card and useful for many different situations. Obviously, you have the Home Assistant built-in pop-up card, but I could see this being used on certain types and layouts of dashboards. So that's the device card. I'll put a link to that in the description down below. And if you end up using this card, then don't forget to click on the star button so that the developer knows you appreciated their efforts. Next up, we have Embedded View Card by Red Canoon, and this card basically allows you to embed a card from another dashboard straight into a specific dashboard. So the repository page has a little animation showing you it in action, but we'll get this one installed and see what it's like. Again, in Hacks, search for Embedded View Card, and it should be available for download. Click on that item and then click on the download button. Once installed, if we edit our dashboard and add a new card, if we look for embedded view card, we then get the UI. So you can either have a dynamic or static card. If I just select the static one for now, then you simply specify your dashboard and it doesn't look like you can choose your current dashboard as the source. So I have a mobile version of my dashboard already set up. So if I just select that, then I can choose one of the views that have been set up on that dashboard. If I just 
choose my office room view and as you can see I've now got a nice embedded slightly smaller view of my office dashboard view. I can now add another one of these alongside so if I go back into the editor and add another embedded view card and this time we'll add my monitoring dashboard view and there you go two dashboards all put side by side on one dashboard and all fully functional as well. I think this is a really cool card and opens up a lot of possibilities. Hit the like button if you think so as well. So that's Embedded View Card by Red Canoon. Again, the link for this one is in the description. Next up, and we have one for those of you that like the Google look and feel, and that is Material Components by Giovanni Lamamora. And as you can see here, on the repository page, some nice light and dark themes for these elements and lots of different types of items as well. So we've got button cards, sliders, climate cards, and so on. We find this one in Hacks by searching for material home component and install it in the same way as the other cards. When we edit our dashboard, we can search for material. And as you can see, you get the different types of cards available. If I just choose the climate card and use my Wiser heating system, as you can see, we've got some simple settings for this card. So let's try out a light control. And this one is basically a pill shape split in half uh, with one side being on and the other side being off. And with this one, you can control a specific area. So if I just toggle that on, then I can choose the office room uh, for the lighting. Uh, it's an interesting looking design. Obviously, you can reduce the layout size of these components to fit your needs. You've also got a button card and you can use that for lights and other switches and even scenes as well. And I think the material design really kind of works better on a mobile device. So if you're planning to have your dashboard running pretty much exclusively on that, then this might be a nice option to look at. But as you can see, you could end up with some very nice dashboards using this. So that's Material Components by Giovanni Lamamora. Check out the link to this one in the description. Next on my list is Simple Swipe Card by uh, Newt Loost. And this one caught my attention due to some of its unique features. I already use a full page swipe component on my dashboard, but this is more at an individual item level. So let's get this one installed, search for simple swipe card in hacks and then download it. Now, I did get a slight error when this finished, but I re-downloaded it again and everything was fine. If we just add a new card to our dashboard and search for simple swipe card, you can see that we can choose either a view mode of single or carousel. So we'll choose single for now. And basically you then need to set up how you want this card to function and be displayed. So after that, you then need to add in the cards that you want to use. And whilst you can put anything that you want uh, in there out of the list of cards available, it's probably best to keep them to the same kind of card. So if I just add a mushroom light card and just edit that in the normal way that I would do if I added that to the dashboard myself. And then if I just add a couple more mushroom light cards and then uh, click on save. So now you can see I've got this button on the dashboard and I can slide this back and forth and I can click on the dots as well to move to the next item. And of course, I can control the device on each particular button just like normal. Uh, and if you don't want the dots displayed, then you can turn those off using the pagination dots option in the settings. So the other option you've got is the carousel view and you can simply leave the selected cards that you've got set up as is and just switch to that mode. And as you can see, this one is a little different as you get to see more than one card at a time and parts of another to indicate that there are more options available. And you can configure how many and how much is displayed on the screen if you want. In the advanced options, you can configure the loop behavior and also whether it automatically swipes across for you. You could certainly do some really fancy things with this. I like the idea of having the room temperatures scrolling around, but what would you use it for? Let me know in the comments below. 
So that's Simple Swipe Card by Nuke Loost. Uh, make sure to check that one out with the link in the description. And finally for this video, I've got a card which is likely not for everyone, but I can certainly see some fantastic use cases for it. And that is the Timeline card by Weed Pump. As you can see here, this shows a nice timeline of events for a given device. So maybe something like your front door opening and closing, or maybe you could have your heating system, or even something to check your internet connectivity. Anyway, let's get this one installed. So searching for timeline card, we just download it and then we can add that card to our dashboard. So in the UI, you've got a general settings, uh, which has got the title, the refresh rate, how much history is loaded into the timeline, how the events are shown and the layout. And then you just select the entities that you want to display. So if I select the uh, vibration sensor on my cat's litter box, don't ask, uh, but we use that one for example, and straight away I've got a timeline of when that sensor was activated. And if I just take a look at the styling of the timeline, and as you can see, I can have it so that the events are shown at the left or the right, rather than alternating down the timeline. I can also toggle on or off the various elements from each item that is displayed if I want something a little less verbose and have a bit more of a cleaner look to things as well. So that's Timeline Card by Weed Pump. That too will be in the description down below, but that's five really nice cards for your Home Assistant dashboards that will definitely add something special to what you have. I really like the embedded card. I can see that being super useful when you want to switch things around according to the person using the dashboard. But which ones are you going to take a look at? Let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more of these, then don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and hit the notification bell as well so that you don't miss the next video that I've got lined up across the rest of December as part of my 12 Days of Smart Home Christmas series. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.